Pre-ground meat from the supermarket is convenient, but there's some real advantages to grinding meat at home instead. You get to select the right cut for the recipe, or even a blend of cuts for the balance of texture and flavor. This is great for building a better burger. Plus, you get to control the size of the ground pieces, making them larger or finer to suit your needs. Finally, grinding meat at home is great for those that are worried about food contamination. A package of pre-ground supermarket beef may contain the meat of several, even hundreds of cows. So knowing the source and seeing the quality of the meat before it's ground is a big plus. Now, you can certainly use a food grinder to grind meat, but we've had excellent results using a food processor, and that's probably what you're much more likely to have in your kitchen. But to get the meat evenly ground, we need to do a little prep before we get to the food processor. So today I'm going to show you how to grind beef, but you would use this same process for grinding pork, lamb, or even chicken and turkey. Okay, here's our larger roast, and this is a small chuck eye roast. It weighs about two pounds. Now we're going to turn this into ground chuck. And we would also cut down a blade roast or blade steaks for this job, and the premise is the same. The first thing that you want to do is break this roast down into smaller pieces. About one inch cubes should do it. Now, as we cut down the roast, we'll get rid of any hard knobs of fat and papery silver skin that are on there. And both of these are very unpleasant to eat, even when ground. But we want to leave any softer bits of fat on the meat. The softer fat grinds down well and will give the nice and right balance of lean meat to fat in the final grind. So, let me show you how we're going to go ahead and separate this. Just want to pull apart the two sections of muscle right along this line of hard fat. And we can use our boning knife to cut it away. And then here's some of the soft fat that I was talking about. We can leave some of it on the meat, but we want to get rid of any of this hard fat that's inside here. So just trim away the fat as best you can, leaving the meat intact. All right, so when the meat is cut down to size, we place the cubes on a large plate, or you can use a rimmed baking sheet and spread them out as much as you can. And then you want to freeze this for about 20 minutes. Now by chilling down and hardening the meat just a little bit, we can ensure that the meat grinds into distinct small pieces rather than become overprocessed into a rough paste. So let's go put this in the freezer. So after about 20 minutes, we are ready for the food processor. Now the next key to grinding meat is to work in batches. You don't want to overload the processor with too much meat or it won't evenly grind. So we're going to work with about a half pound batches at a time. So we're going to load up the food bowl or the work bowl of our food processor here. There we go. And then we'll replace the lid. There we go. Now, after that, we're going to go ahead and pulse the cubes until they are ground to our liking. And this is going to range from about 15 to 20 one-second pulses. So, let's give it a whirl. All right, so let's take a look here. Now, you can reach in, pull off a little bit of the meat and see the size. And when the meat is sufficiently ground, we want to remove it from the work bowl, and then we'll repeat with the remaining batches. So we can dump it out on a sheet and then use our hands to kind of spread out the meat and at this point we can remove any large pieces of tissue or fat that are still unevenly ground. All right, so let's continue working with the remaining batches. All right, so that should do it. So we'll just spread this out. All right, so that looks really good. Now, as I mentioned before, this technique can be used with pork, lamb, chicken, or turkey. But you want to stick with chicken thighs or turkey thighs. The white meat is just really too lean. And as for lamb, you can use a shoulder roast or shoulder chops. They're both perfect for this task. And then for pork, you can grind a boneless pork shoulder roast. That's often labeled as a Boston butt. But with all of these cuts, the method is exactly the same. Cut the meat into small pieces, making sure to trim away any excess fat, freeze them until they're nice and firm, and then process in batches.